Hi, this is Dennis with SuccessfulPractice.net and I want to uh, do a video on creating a marketing database using Microsoft Access. So the first thing you want to do is open up Access. It's probably one of those programs you have on your system that you never use, but I started playing around with it uh, a little while ago and found it to be for useful for a couple of things. So I'm going to walk you through the basics of setting up a database that you can use for your uh, marketing efforts. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up Microsoft Access and you'll come to this window here and you just go ahead and click blank database. There are some other, you know, templates here, but we're just going to start with a blank database. Now I've already created a portion of a database, so I'm, I'm going to open up the existing one I'm working on. Uh, this is a database I'm working on um, related to a, a campaign for test uh, to generate psych testing referrals. So I'm building the database of different uh, segments, if you will, different uh, people that I want to send this brochure to that I've developed. So we have educational attorneys, pediatricians, and psychiatrists, and then this is kind of a, a way of keeping track of the uh, the campaign itself. And so I'm going to add another segment to this marketing campaign, and and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the Create tab. And we're going to add a, a new table. And so as we add the new table, you're going to see that's going to put this little um, indicator right here. And the first thing we need to do is just create some headings along the top. And the way you do that is you just double click on that box. And we're going to put in, let's start with company name. And then we'll we'll go with the some some of these uh, companies will only have a company name. Others will have a person's name attached to it. So you want to go ahead and set up both, so that way you have the option to do it either or 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 both. And when you're putting in names, it's really important to separate the first and last name. So I'm going to make separate columns for the first name and last name. And then we'll put in address or street, street address one, street address two, in case there's a, a suite or a PO box, we need to make room for that. And then city, state, and zip. And it's really important that each of these be in separate fields so that when we're using this database later, whether it's in a um, you know, creating labels or for a, a mail merge, that uh, all the data is in, in separate columns so that you can manipulate it most effectively in that matter. The other thing I would recommend that you do is if you're thinking, particularly if you're thinking about uh, sending a letter based on the people in your database, you would probably want to set up some kind of indicator for the greeting. So if it were a physician, you might want to, you know, have it say, dear doctor, so-and-so. Um, so you can put in a field to capture that. So uh, greeting, or you can call it, you know, prefix or um, something of, the, of that nature. Um, so let's just go ahead and call it greeting. And I'm going to just move that so it kind of makes sense to have it near the the name here. So it could be a Mr. or Mrs. It could be a doctor. It could be you know something like along those lines. And you know when we take a look at doing a mail merge, that'll come in real handy to have that. Otherwise, you'll have to change it um, each time you do it. So this way, it kind of allows you to to capture that information on the front end. So I'm going to go ahead and put some information in here and I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me type. Um, I will return in a moment. Alright, I put in a, a couple of uh, entries just to show you where I am so far and I'm going to keep building this list but a couple different examples here. Here, you, All three have company names. Uh, this, this one has a, a person associated with it so I had to put the, the, greet, the appropriate greeting for her in there as well. And then we have uh, Kuman Learning Center down here has a two-part address. 
I'm just gonna widen the column there so you can see that. So this is the, the basics of setting up your your data. And I should mention the ID on the far left here. This is randomly generated by access. So if I put in a new entry here, you'll see that there's a there's a number that's generated. I did have a 10, but I deleted that. So it'll auto automatically generate a number associated with it. So don't worry about that. Um, in fact, you could hide that if you wanted to. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the next step would be to, if I go ahead and close that, it's going to prompt me to save this. And yes, we want to save it. And we are going to name this, um, let's see, educational consultants. All right. And so that's going to change the name here and change the name of the table. So at any time, I could open up that table, add to it, or any other table. I have a list of psychiatrists here, pediatricians. I have all these different uh, tables. And one of the nice things is once you have a table in place, there's multiple things that you can do with it. One of the things that I uh, kind of like about using Access is it allows me to quickly print out labels without having to do much work at all. So um, I'll show you how to set it up with this particular one. So if we're on the table that we just created, and again, this is a you know, partial table, but we are going to just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to create some labels based on this. So we'll go to the Create menu here, and we're going to click Labels. And it remembers the labels I use, the Avery 8160, which is a pretty standard label. Label. So we we'll go ahead and click Next. And these are just the uh, font size and settings. We'll just leave it as the default values here. Click Next. And then it's going to ask you to, to build the label. So this is a sample label. So I want to put in a company name, if there is a company name. In this case, all of these have company names, but you could be sending it to uh, you know, just a person, so there may not be a company name. But if some do and some don't, you definitely want to put that there. So if, if the data is, uh, is not present, it's, it's not going to print that information. It'll just print it for those where that's present in a database. We'll hit return and we'll go to the next line. We'll do first name and last name. And then address one. And address two. We may have to do that on the same line because of the size of the label. We'll take a look at that in a minute. City, state. Actually, I'm going to put in a, uh, a comma there, a space. And I'm not sure, I'm just going to put spaces in here, I'm not sure if it's going to automatically do that or not, so I'm just going to put them in, add some spaces, and then zip code, and let's take a look, it's going to ask, you know, we can sort these by these different fields, we'll just sort them by company name, it really doesn't matter, and that's fine, we want to see how they'll look print it, so let's hit finish. And it's going to show us here our label. So there was one. Okay, so this one here had the the address one and address two. Um, I'm not really. I don't really think that first thing is necessary. It's Marchwood Center. So I'm going to just actually go back to the table and take that out, and then and then we'll, we'll update our labels. So I'm just going to move this here. If it was smaller, if it was like a you know Suite 101 or something like that, it, it it would be fine. But because it's kind of a longer name, and I don't think that's really necessary, I'm just going to delete that. So I'm going to right-click and save the table, and I'm going to actually close out of here. And you can see here it'll, it'll save the the labels report, if you will. If I double-click that, it should bring me back and it's made that change. Now you notice here that the view is a little bit different than before and we can simply change it by going to um, the print preview option. And this is telling me that there's some kind of something in the in the table it doesn't like. There's probably an entry that's uh, must have been this entry I started and I didn't do anything with so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And 
again, I'll save the table, and I should be able to, if I close this and open it again, that hopefully goes away. Yep. So that's what that was. It was trying to, to pull some information from a blank column. So here we can easily print out our labels and you know stick them on envelopes or on, on brochures. So this is a quick and easy way to use access and again using different segments. So if you want to set up a, a campaign where you can use uh, you want to send the same brochure or letter to different um, different groups, you can kind of keep track of that. And then one of the things I've done is I've in this campaign details tab, I've created this little table where I can, you know, I'm, I have a testing brochure I'm working on. I'm going to send it out soon. I'll track when it was sent, who I sent it to, and it'll actually, you know, link to the file here, so I can actually pull up the file that I sent. So. If it's a brochure, it's probably not that important, but if it was a letter or, you know, there may be different versions or, of letters. So, well, you know, what letter did I send? I can just double click that and I'll know exactly what I sent to whom and when. So just kind of a helpful way to keep track of your marketing efforts. Um, so there you go. Uh, that is using Microsoft Access to create a marketing database. And in a future video, I'll show you how to use the same data to do uh, a, a letter, a marketing letter in Microsoft Word. So this will come in handy, not just for labels, but for other applications. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.